Good morning. How's everyone doing today? Excited for your first day? Yay, I'm excited too. Welcome to Trent University. It is my pleasure to welcome you and all of the students that are joining us online as well. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to your graduate student orientation session. My name is Sasha Trivet, and I am the Director of Graduate Studies. And we have a really great day planned for you. But before we begin, I would like to respectfully acknowledge that we are on the treaty and ter traditional territory of the Mississauga Anishinaabe. We offer our gratitude to the First Nations for their care for and teaching about our earth and our relations. May we honor those teachings. As I mentioned today, we have a great agenda for you, lots of helpful information uh, for you to learn today. And I hope that you take the time to get to know each other and engage in some of the social activities that we have planned for you. So here's our agenda for the day. You'll see that we are mainly in this room and 117 across the hall. And at the end of each session, we're going to invite you to join the next session, whether it be in this room or the other room, there will be notifications on the screen um, for which students should go to which room at which time. And when you arrived, you will likely have noted there are some organizations at tables in the atrium. So please take time to visit these tables today, including the Office of Research and Innovation, the Trent Graduate Student Association, and the Canadian Union of Public Employees, QP2, which is your union. If you have questions throughout the day about graduate studies or what's going on, especially the events today, um, please do stop by the School of Graduate Studies table where you checked in and got your swag bag, and we'll be there to answer questions throughout the day for you. In your swag bag, you'll find some helpful information and resources, as well as your lunch coupon. So don't lose, I think it's a little blue coupon. Don't lose your lunch coupon. You'll need that for the delicious taco lunch that we have planned from La Mesita downtown. Lunch will be served in the Enwaying Courtyard just across the hall behind us. So outside at lunchtime, you can grab yourself some tacos. You will also find in your bag, there's an icebreaker called Getting to Know You. So we invite you to use this card to get to know other students today, other students that um, might be in your program or not. And there will be some prizes for the winners. So on the welcome table, you'll notice there was a box there. When you've completed your card, please pop it in there and we'll do a draw a little bit later for the winners of that, of that um, icebreaker. If this is the first time to visit Trent University, you'll probably want to jump on a campus tour after lunch. Uh, tours are departing from the courtyard in uh, where your uh, taco lunch will be. So jump on a tour if you'd like to see a little bit more of our campus today. And we also have a special treat for you. Our friendly campus alpacas will be making an appearance. I know I'm so excited to meet them myself. Um, so please do take time to, uh, you know, grab a selfie moment with a Trent alpaca. Uh, they'll be in the courtyard during lunch for visiting. It is now my great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Leo Grork, President and Vice Chancellor of Trent University, to bring some welcome remarks. Thanks so much, Sasha. I just wanted to stop by to welcome you to Trent uh, University, uh, maybe also to congratulate you uh, because this is the graduate class. Uh, so if you're here, it's because you have already some significant accomplishments at the undergraduate uh, level. So congratulations on that. Uh, we're delighted uh, that you're pursuing graduate studies at Trent University. Uh, I was asked to say a few things about uh, Trent, and I'll do that. And I was also asked uh, to give you some practical advice. Uh, that's a little more complicated, and I, I will uh, get to that. Um, about Trent, a uh, couple things. Uh, 
one unique thing uh, about Trent, especially I think uh, when you're in graduate studies, is that we're a smaller uh, university. And I invite you to think of that as an opportunity. Uh, I'm not gonna, it's not supposed to say what I, well, I won't mention any specific names. You can go to a big university and sort of become a number rather than a name and be with a sea of thousands and thousands of other graduate uh, students. And there is a place for that. And if the right supervisor or the right program is there, that might be uh, best for you. To me, one of the advantages about Trent is as a smaller institution, you actually have a lot more opportunity to get to know not just your professors, the librarians, your fellow students, administration, uh, if you care to do that. Uh, so I encourage you to take advantage of that. Second thing I wanted to say about Trent, uh, and you see it in Peterborough today, uh, maybe let me say something about Peterborough and then I'll say something about uh, Durham. Uh, Trent University in Peterborough Peterborough is a spectacular campus. I've been to almost every university in Canada, and this campus ranks among the very top when it comes to beautiful campuses. So I know you're going to be working hard at your graduate studies, 12, 13 hours a day, uh, late at night in your lab, in the library, but please, Take the time to go and explore uh, the campus. Uh, I'm an avid kayaker, so I favor being on the water or in the water. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, go to the wildlife sanctuary and just take a walk uh, along the trails there. You won't regret it. You've got to go think and meditate. That's a great place to be. I understand there's students from Durham who are listening or watching. If you're in Durham, I'd say something similar. The Durham campus is only about eight blocks from Lake Ontario. You should go to Lake Ontario. And if you're in Durham, you should go to downtown Toronto. You're connected to that in a very special way. So let me end my remarks by this whole practical advice. So <laughs> I thought I had a bright idea last night. I was talking uh, to my daughter who not too long ago uh, first completed a master's degree in kinesiology and then in physiotherapy. She's working as a physiotherapist. Uh, uh, Natty lives with Jay, who about three years ago uh, finished his PhD in agriculture for the University of Guelph. And they've both gone on and are doing uh, great things. I thought, I asked them, I said, okay, I have to say hello to graduate students uh, uh, this morning. Uh, what advice would you give them? Uh, you know, I was a graduate student back in ancient times. Uh, uh, what about the graduate students for today? So they both gave me advice. But what I would say is, it was contradictory advice. <laughs> so Natty's advice was get to work, look at the deadlines, be organized. The end of term will come sooner than you think. Make sure you get to work. Jay's advice was don't forget to have a beer on Friday. <laughs> don't forget to take care of your mental health. So I think I'm going to just say that those are two poles, and I think you're in the best situation to know where you fit between those two poles. Uh, but please, of course, work hard and be diligent and be careful that before you know it, the deadlines jump uh, out at you, but also uh, take care of your mental health. And maybe that gives me some practical advice uh, that I will give you, which is, Trent University is full of people who are ready to help you. So my real advice would be, if there are issues you have of any sort, 
don't hesitate to ask. Don't hesitate to reach out. Of course, you can reach out to your professors. You can reach out to the Dean of Graduate Study. Huh, I see David there. You can reach out to David Farang. He'll be happy to give you uh, advice. Um, you can reach out to the librarians. I see uh, Dwayne is here. You can reach out to staff. Um, you know, if you don't know where to reach out for that matter, send me an email. Okay, it's very unlikely that I'll be able to solve your problem, but I probably know who can respond uh, to your problem uh, in a helpful way, and I'm really very happy to do that. I'm always amazed at university how, whether it's student services, counseling, all over the place, there's so many services available, and yet people miss them every year simply because they don't reach out. So ask, reach out. And I look forward to crossing paths as you go through your graduate studies and go on to the great careers that they're gonna to lead to. Take care. Thank you, Dr. Grork, for those wonderful words of wisdom. Please welcome Dr. Craig Brunetti, your Dean of Graduate Studies. So thank you. I'm just pausing for a second. This is kind of a, a weird feeling. I don't know if you know, but this is the first in-person orientation we've had since 2019. And so it's, it's really amazing to see all of you here today with us in person. It really signals, I think, to me that change is in the air, and I'm really excited that you're part of this. I want to welcome all of you to Trent University. Uh, some of you may have done previous degrees with us, so you're returning. And for others of you, this is new, and as Dr. Gork said, uh, if you're new to Trent, it's worth taking some time and exploring the campus. It's really a great campus. And I'm also welcoming through the live stream uh, those folks who are with us at our Trent Durham campus, those doing our master's of management degree down there. Um, you, it's an interesting time for us because you represent our largest incoming class of graduate students. So we have almost 400 new students joining us, which will bring our population of graduates, active graduate students to almost 900. So that's a huge increase uh, from the numbers that we had. And it, it presents interesting challenges, but exciting opportunities as well. One of the things that I, I would share with you, just as maybe some things to think about is, when I was in your space, which was a long time ago, um, you know, I was studying basically a little mechanism about how a particular virus gets into cells. That's what my PhD was on. And that's what I thought my whole world was about, was understanding that little bit of, 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 of biology. But since then, I've come to reflect on, you know, what I actually learned at grad study during my time in graduate studies. And it wasn't that little thing about the virus and how it gets into cells, but I learned things about communication leadership, teamwork, ethics, writing skills. And those are actually the really important skills. You may take them for granted, but during your degree, those are the types of things that you're going to build. And those are the types of things that are going to be marketable for you, uh, no matter what type of career you decide to pursue after you complete your studies. So I would also emphasize to all of you that there are gonna be a lot of professional development workshops and things that are gonna be available to you over, over the year, and many of those are available this week. Um, take some time and take advantage of those opportunities to expand your experiences and, and, and make your time at Trent uh, as worthwhile and valuable as it can be. Now, I was also told to do a public service announcement. <laughs> so my PSA is, there's a Trent Academic and uh, Integrity Policy and Prevention uh, Workshop. It's on kind of the next slide, or do we go to? Uh, um, so it's on Tuesday, October 4th from 7 to 8.30, and you can sign up for it on the Student Experience Portal. 
And so if you're unfamiliar with academic integrity policy or procedures, uh, this is a great workshop to attend. But certainly, it probably as part of your welcome package, you've seen all sorts of opportunities this week. So please take advantage of them. So the last thing I think I would, I would like to say, or I would like to remind you is that um, you're, you've been introduced to the School of Graduate Studies. School of Graduate Studies is in Blackburn Hall. For those of you that have been here before, you know where that is. If you haven't been to Trent, uh, work your way down. It's on the other side of the river, south of the athletic fields. I have to admit, I, I've, I've, my office is in Blackburn Hall. I can't figure out that building. You just kind of, those of you that have been here know what I'm talking about. You just kind of go in circles and eventually some circle will take you across the space that you want to go. So I'm not going to tell you where the School of Graduate Studies is because I have no idea where it is in the building. <laughs> But please just wander around it. You'll see what I mean, trust me. Uh, but you'll find us eventually. Uh, and certainly stop by. It's, the office is closed today, but stop by this week. Say hi to, the, uh, to the, the staff in the office. Many of you have worked with them through the admissions process. Uh, so you can put a, uh, a face to the names that, that you've uh, uh, dealt with. So uh, all I'd like to just conclude by saying uh, thank you for choosing Trent University. I'm really excited you're here. I hope you have a great time. I hope you have learned a lot and I hope you have some great experiences while you're here. So take care. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Dr. Brunetti. It, it is true about Blackburn Hall, but I'm sure some kind person in Blackburn Hall will definitely direct you to our office and we'd love you to stop by and say hi anytime you happen to be in the building. I would now like to invite Dr. Michael Eamon, principal of Trail College, to come and share some words with you. Michael. Hi, folks. How are things today? Let's see. Is the, there, there was a mic issue, but it sounds like it's working. Hey, everybody can hear. I think we're good, Will. I think the mic's working. That's great. Good. Excellent. Hello, everyone. Um, Trail College. Now, a lot of people will say, what's the deal with this? I went to Trent University, I got accepted to Trent University. Now they're talking about these colleges. What's up? Well, Trent University, for those who are brand new to it, is a, a collegiate university. And we have comprised of five university colleges. And the graduate college, the college for every new student who is entering Trent this year is Trail College. And so I'm gonna take a few minutes to tell you about why Trail College is important, how uh, the president, said, so it's got to be true, the president said you've got to you know, seize opportunity. What Dr. Leo Clark said, and I think Trail College is one of those spaces where you can see. There's a guy, um, Mark Twain. Has anyone ever heard of Mark Twain here before? His real name is Samuel. I didn't even use his real name. But he said, or purportedly said, I never let my schooling interfere with my education. I never let my schooling interfere with my education. So if he said that truly, it is actually a one classroom to do labs and to do your work like that, but there's education that comes from that. So at Trail College, we hope to offer some of that surrounding experience. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to tell you about what Trail is about, how it can serve graduate students, where we are, because we are not here, Trail College is actually eight kilometers down near the center of downtown Peterborough. Trail College is actually where Trent University started 15 years ago. So you'll see that in the way we operate. It's a four acre urban oasis that blends uh, three centuries of settler art. But let's talk a bit. Can we hit the slide? Do I have a slide coming up next? Let's see. Look at that. Here's some advice my grad, first graduate supervisor said to me. She said, Michael, Oh, I talk. So please don't look at me. Look at the slides and look how wonderful Trail College is. Trail College is for graduate students. We have all sorts of activities. Deal is all about. Nice. Thanks for making it, guys. As all you folks, you are part of your original. 
But I still welcome you to come down to trail. And if you want to reassociate with trail, that is a big pitch, tell you why. But trail has the only college library. We, for graduate students, offer, if you ask for it, 24 hour access to that library into our common room, a space where you can hang out grad students and let education happen, not just let education happen. You can see this is sort of a taste of what Trail College looks like. Another slide, please. Oh, sorry, online listeners. I'm going to do this then. All right, online listeners, I'm sorry that you can't hear me. But you asked for it, and it's like a vampire. When you ask the vampire to cross the threshold, it's your problem. Now you've asked me to hold on to the mic, it's your problem. But well, Trail College is a dynamic community of scholars. That's the whole point of this whole collegiate system is to bring interdisciplinary conversations around so people can get together and talk about things that really matter, like you know, the video games they enjoy playing or you know, what happened on you know, the TV the last night or about science or about philosophy and bringing all those things together. Can you click it, please? So there are 1,600 students at Trail College, half of them are grad students, and that gives a wonderful flavor to the college. The graduate apartments at Trail College as well, so we have 14 graduate students and their families living at Trail College. It is truly a space for grad students. Hit it, please. We're a hub for the Peterborough art scene, and also the LGBTQ2 plus community. Trail College is formed I don't want to go too long because I can go long and they know this. So they're going to, that's the other reason for the mic. It's going to be like, it's just going to be like the Emmys or the Oscars and they're going to cut it off. But Trail College was formed 58 years ago for women only. And you're like, what? Women only? What's the deal? Well, back in the 60s, there was issues with the accessing education. And many of us here know what it, the obstacles there are in getting higher education. Back in the 60s, it was a dude fest in universities. Only guys need apply and there are very few women. So Trail College was purposely built as an all women's college, not to isolate women, but to empower them and encourage them into higher education. And even though we're fully co-ed, no matter what race, creed, color, whatever gender you may have, you are welcome at Trail College and we are still an empowering space for people a safe space for people. So if we keep on going, we have graduate student spaces. What are they, you may ask? Hit it. We have a graduate reading room for graduate students only, a lovely place in this pastoral play, in this college to write up or to do research. We have a senior common room, a lovely space where you get to mix with professors and actually talk about things that matter. GTA offices. We also offer GTA offices for 80 grad students at Trail College. So there's a lot of things going on down there. And we have services and programs such as the Simon series for graduate research, where you take someone in the arts and someone in the sciences, and we put them together in a room. And it's not, it's not like the octagon. People do come out alive. But we put them in the room, and we talk about things that matter. And we try to make those links between the arts and sciences. So, you know, as C.P. Snow said, we, didn't, we don't want to create this sort of box where, you know, only, you know, science need apply. We need to have the arts kind of coming into that as well. Um, 3MT which is a great way to get your graduate research out in three minutes. So don't worry, it only takes three minutes, but this is another thing that Trail College offers. Hit it. Next slide, please. We also offer Trail College graduates uh, instructor skills, and that is on all sorts of things, including blink, Motivation Mondays. That helps you get out of the, you know, in the mornings and come to Trail College and, and start thinking about graduate things. Writing retreats. You know, it's great to get away and trail is a wonderful place to retreat to. Workshops for grad students, all sorts of time management, reading, writing, how to write like a grad student, how to read like a grad student. You might think, I already know how to read and write, but do you, can you do it like a grad student? Well, if you're interested in what that means, come to Trail College and figure it out. And finally, that 3MT competition that we have. Finally, because I know the hook is coming out very fast, where is this mythical place, this Brigadoon, this, uh, this Middle Earthly place called Trail College? Here it is. Four acres in downtown Peterborough between London Street and Dublin Street. The 11A bus goes there directly. We're about a 10 minute walk from downtown Peterborough. And here's some key dates to remember. Our GTA training tomorrow. So many of you will come down to Trail College and check it out. So I'll be there and we'll have a good time. Next one, we have the Trail Carnival, which is family friendly. And that's something I didn't mention. University life should be about 
interdisciplinary but intergenerational learning. And so our carnival will have bouncy castles and fun family friendly things and a beer tent and a barbecue, free food. We have whatever your pleasure, we have it all this Saturday at Trail College from 11 to four. And finally, our scarf ceremony. This is where I'm gonna take the last two minutes. Okay, Sasha, just two more minutes and then I will, I know she's like, no, no, yes. So the last two minutes, I'm gonna talk about our scarf ceremony. October 1st, all of you, are eligible to get a trail college scarf. So come on October 1st on the Saturday at 11 a.m. and we'll officially induct you into this. Now, we're not a cult. I, I'm not wearing running shoes, though I am wearing funny clothes. But what is the deal with the scarf and being inducted? Well, on it has our motto and models are, mean something. And it's in Latin, so you know it's gotta be good, right? Because it's in Latin. And it's nunc cognosco ex parte which means now I know in part. And you're like, worst motto ever. I want to know more than part. I want to know it all. But who really wants to be a know-it-all? Know-it-alls are jerks, right? The smartest person in the room, who wants to be that jerk, right? Only a proud know-it-some can find out what the world's about. And when you know a little bit more, know a little bit more, know a bit more, and make yourself better through education, then you can go on and make the lives of others better too. So our model is now I know in part at Trail College, and you are all now proud know it sums. So I want you all to come on October 1st, get your scarf, we'll put it on you, and then you'll be part of the family. But before then, I hope to see you at many of our activities. Um, okay, now I'm way over. So thank you very much. Welcome to Trent. Welcome to Trail. Have a great week, guys. Thank you, Dr. Eamon. I am sure you'll all be rushing to Trail College to get your coveted scarf uh, this term. So it is a beautiful, beautiful place. So please do go and visit Trail College. Our final guest uh, this morning before we get to the next session is Emma Kazaki. She is the president of Trent Graduate Students Association. Emma. I'm going to be very brief because I am a science major and I am not as eloquent with words as any person that spoke before me because like you, I am a fellow graduate student. I'm in my PhD here at Trent. I did my undergrad here at Trent. I started my master's and then switched on over. And what I am doing is representing, Sasha, hit the slide, is uh, <laughs> representing all of you and our many, many, many graduate students here at Trent, both in Peterborough and at Durham. We are the student association that works for you. So I was voted in last year. I'm sorry you had no say, you didn't exist here yet, but I am your president. I am the leader, I guess you could call it, of the GSA, but I have a beautiful, wonderful team behind me. We're all out there waiting to meet you, except for one of us, he's at Harvard right now studying. I hope that's a cool plug for them. Um, but we are, we've got tons of information for you guys to learn about. I'll be super, super brief, but we've got an information packet that's in your orientation package right now. So there's some information in there about us. If you've got any questions about your research, any questions about services, any need with help financially, we can offer those services for you. Similar to Trail College, we also offer many, many different events over the year. We'll have a huge year-end party in April that we like to host or our Festivus celebration that we do in December. And yes, we're the ones sponsoring the Beer Town on Saturday at Trail College. So we hope to see you there. And <laughs> so it's going to be a really great year. We've got a really great team. We're really excited to meet all of you. I am going to say that we're out there tabling and I will entice you with uh, fun snacks and treats from my favorite local bakery, Black Honey. And there are uh, snacks and treats for people that also have dietary restrictions. We thought of you. And so I will entice you out there to meet you and do that. We're tabling right beside QP, which is your student union. We are not the union, they are the union. We are an association. There's a bit of a divide because I guess technically we represent you. So. We'll figure out definitions and things later, but if you want more information, if you want to learn about us, if you want to chat and talk about research, we're all out there to talk and we're all there for you. And that includes our Durham students who I'll see you on Thursday. Um, so it was really great to meet you guys, future doctors in the room. I feel you, I'm not, not doctor anybody yet, but we'll get there together. And uh, if you need anything, just our emails right there, hit us up, okay? Welcome Trent. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Emma. I'm coming to visit you. I love black honey treats. Okay. Um, now we, uh, I'd like to definitely thank all of our distinguished speakers for the warm words of welcome that they have brought. We are going to move on now to um, a library services tutorial for you. And I invite our digital scholarship and innovation librarian, Dwayne Collins, to bring the next session for you. So do you wanna use this mic? Uh, yes, I think I need the mic. So I'm gonna try and do this. Over there. All right, I, well, the mic is, I'm coming over here to the, the computer. So hello everyone, uh, I'm Dwayne Collins. I'm from the library. Uh, obviously I don't do slides. I just show you things live. That's what we do. Uh, we're sort of the fuel for the furnace, if you will, of your academic endeavors. Uh, since uh, Michael took up more time than he should have, I'm gonna try and catch us up a little bit. Uh, so uh, everything you need to know about the library is on our website, which is trentu.ca slash library. Uh, I'm gonna try and give you a bunch of information today. All I want you to be able to walk away from today is this information, it's on the website. Uh, those of you who have gone to either Trent or another Ontario school, you're uh, able to access our resources through something called Omni. If we actually look at Omni, Omni is actually a catalog that is a uh, collection of resources across 16 academic institutions in Ontario. This is very important because first rule you will learn when you are teaching as TAs is that the minute that you try to type something into a website in front of a group of people, it will be wrong. Oh, oh the people online cannot see at all what I am doing. So they are very confused at the moment. All right, can they see it? No. Hmm. I'm going to keep going. Hopefully they can catch up. For those of you who are following along online who cannot see what I'm doing, trentu.ca slash library is the message of the day. So just go along. Um, but we're looking at Omni. Omni actually shows us a number of things. I did a quick look here. You'll see often that it says not available locally, but then you'll see there are a bunch of institutions that have it. This is the most important thing about the library is that if we do not physically have it in Peterborough, we can get it to you. So if you were to be able to log in with a simple click, this book would be on its way to you within a few days. You would be able to borrow it the same as you could any within else at Trent, which means you would have it for 120 days. This also applies to articles. I know things like Sci-Hub and academia.edu and ResearchGate are popular. You don't need them. You can still use them, nothing wrong with them. But if you want things from the library, sorry. I am, haven't done this since 2019 and my vocal ring, my breath control is completely shot. Um, anyways, so you could get this information, this material from anywhere if you find it online, but if you're tr having trouble, the main thing is, is we can connect you to resources. If you cannot figure out how, contact us. That is the other piece where if you go to the library's website, there's a whole section on how to get help, how to contact us, things to know about us. We also have graduate student uh, carols within the library for those of you who are in Peterborough, as well as we can book group study rooms. This applies to both Peterborough and also to uh, Durham as well. You can also book uh, an appointment with a librarian for research help through our library research consultation center. And you can also uh, get access to things like our MAPS data government information center, which helps with GIS, government publications, uh, statistical information. Uh, they are also our experts in research data management. Some of you, if you're doing grants may require a research data management plan. They can help with that as well. And then finally, uh, I like to also plug one of my personal projects, which is a digital collections platform, because this is where all of your hard work gets deposited electronically for all time. These are all the graduate theses of the university and dissertations as well. And rumor has it, we're going to be hopefully adding uh, major research papers soon as well. So no matter what stream you're in, I will probably uh, harvest your information at some point. <laughs> Uh, other pieces as well that I like to point out, we do have uh, research guides based on departments. These are geared towards undergraduates, but they're still useful for graduate students, especially if you are new to the institution or if you're teaching, doing TA work, uh, because this gives you just a brief guide as to how we do things at Trent. So while every library tends to do things the same, 
It's just the slight little tweaks that are a bit different. Uh, this will also be a guide to our many, many, many databases, most of which you can access through Omni. Uh, I am purposely going really fast through this list to show you just how many there are. Oh, no. Oh, no. It, it, it's meant to be intimidating. That's all. <laughs> I was told to keep, that I could take my time. Um, I'm just saying that, though, because we do have a, a vast variety of resources available to you. Uh, and then finally, uh, I also want to plug our archives as well. Um, they have uh, primary documents and, and uh, heritage information as well there. So again, if I can leave you with one final message, trentu.ca slash library, where you will find Omni, which is your link to all of our resources, our databases, research guides, all of our various departments, how to book group study rooms, borrowing information, interlibrary loan, research data management, and anything else that you cannot find here that is library related, just email library at trentu.ca. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we're gonna get back to our slide. Thank you, Dwayne, that was really helpful. And the library staff are so lovely and available for you. Um, so please do go and visit and, and make use of those resources. So we've come to the end of our first session and it's time to take just a, a brief break. Are we on schedule here, 10.15, is that where we are? 10.15, okay, so let's take a, a brief break, about five minutes. And um, at 10.15, from 10.15 to 11.15, in this room, we invite international students to say, Trent International is going to come and chat with you about um, a lot of really interesting pieces for you as newcomers to Canada. And domestic students, I invite you to pop across the hall to room 117, and you're going to hear from our financial aid officers and about funding. So you have about five minutes, grab a coffee, use the washroom, and we'll get started shortly. Thank you.
Hello, everyone. Is this? Hello. Hello. OK. Can you hear me OK? Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to see you here. Um, welcome. Um, my name is Jessica, and today I am here on behalf of Trent International. Uh, so to, I'm assuming everyone in the room is an international student. I know it's been a very challenging few years and a challenging time to get here. So I'm just so happy to see you, all of you here in this room. You finally made it. So welcome. Um, today I'm going to chat with you about several different topics about um, that relate to you as an international student, but I first just want to start with an introduction. My name is Jessica Evans and my pronouns are she, her, and I am a regulated international student immigration advisor here at Trent. Um, I'm also a proud Trent alumni. I studied international development studies at Trent um, in, I think I graduated in 2013, and I also participated in the Trenton Ghana program. Um, do we have any Ghanaians here today? Yay, hi, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm available to you to chat about immigration related topics throughout your time here at Trent. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly at internationaladvising at trentu.ca. Uh, here's our agenda for today. I don't know if we're going to have time to get through everything, but I'm going to do my best. Uh, so we'll chat briefly about Trent International, who we are and what services we provide. Uh, I'll chat a little bit about immigration uh, and just the basics that you need to know today. You'll obviously need to know more in the future as well. A little bit about your health insurance, just an overview. Um, some information about staying scam smart while you're here in Canada. And I'll leave you with a next step checklist. So some things that you should think about leaving this presentation today. Um, you'll see on all of the slides here that we'll have um, links to our website. I just want to let you know that we spent a lot of time trying to develop our website to provide information to you so that it's accessible. You can review it at any time that you need. So whether it's an immigration application tutorial or information about your health insurance, please do check out our current students' website. So Trent International, who are we? Um, so Trent International is the central support office for all international students here at Trent University. So we support graduate students, undergraduate students, English as a second language students, certificate students, and exchange students. Uh, we know that uh, it's really challenging to leave your family, the comforts of home, um, and come to a new academic environment. So we're here to support you uh, throughout your academic journey and making that transition to academic life here in Canada. Uh, we're located in Champlain College, but we do have an office on the Durham campus as well. Um, we are open Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. And uh, you can feel free to drop in or send us an email or give us a call. And uh, we're, we're here to answer any questions that you have. Services that we provide, this is not comprehensive, but I'm just going to touch on some of the important ones today. Uh, we offer pre-arrival support and arrival support. We offer orientation for our new students and ongoing transition support. So obviously after today, you're still going to be going through a transition here in Canada. Uh, so we understand that that process is ongoing and you'll have questions along the way and we'll help uh, provide some support throughout your time. We also administer the university health insurance plan, which is called UHIP, the university, um, sorry, UHIP. <laughs> and we offer study abroad opportunities. So if you want to go do research in another country or participate in an exchange opportunity, uh, you can connect with our team as well. We offer international student specific workshops. Um, so if you, uh, in the winter, we'll have a session on, um, you know, preparing for winter. How do you do that? Uh, looking for off-campus housing. Uh, who, who here has experienced the winter yet? 
Anyone? We're all new to winter. Okay, so please attend this session. It will be very useful to you. <laughs> um, and we'll also cover a variety of different immigration topics. So I do sessions on how to extend your study permit, the post-graduation work permit program. Who wants to get a post-graduation work permit when you're done? Okay, so you can come meet with me. <laughs> I'll help you through that process. Um, and then obviously, I already mentioned, I do offer immigration advising support as well. And I'll talk about some of those services in a few slides. And then we also provide opportunities for you to connect with both international students and domestic students. So um, we support students in, in hosting a variety of different cultural celebrations as well. Um, so you can have a little piece of home while you're here in Canada as well. Okay, so starting at the beginning, your first few weeks here at Trent, I know you're going to have to do a lot of things that domestic students do not have to do, such as uh, obtaining essential items. I'm sure that you weren't able to pack your entire life into your suitcase and come to Canada. So that's okay. <laughs> we can support you in, in finding out where you can find your essential items. Um, so feel free to pop into our office and we'll help you navigate the city to find what you need. Um, we'll also uh, provide support and understanding banking in Canada. Who's opened up a bank account? Grad students, you're the best. <laughs> you're on top of it. But for those of you who haven't, that's okay. Um, we're here to support you with that as well. So feel free to connect with our office and we can walk you through your next steps. Um, Obtaining a social insurance number. I'm sure all of you are hoping to work while you're here in Canada. Is that true? <laughs> okay, Who, who's already obtained their social insurance number? What? Okay, I don't even, okay, I should just go. Um, <laughs> okay, so that's great. I'm glad to see that. Um, uh, we'll answer any of your immigration related questions. So if you're someone who's stressed because your study permit isn't um, valid for the full length of your program, don't worry, we'll help you. Um, and then connecting with international, other international students. Uh, our orientation staff and uh, upper year leader, student leaders are all wearing red t-shirts that say Trent International on them. So if you see someone like that wandering around campus, feel free to um, introduce yourself to them and they can help you with any questions that you have. And then um, I also just wanted to direct you to our orientation website. So if you want to check out some of the international specific events that are happening, as graduate students, you're welcome to attend. So it's a great opportunity for you to meet other international students here at Trent University. Okay, so for those of you who, who don't have a social insurance number, uh, we do have some on-campus appointments available where a specialist will come in and can, and can help you through the application process. So um, we have uh, appointments on both the Peterborough and Durham campuses. So if you're a Peterborough student, uh, we have sessions coming up next week on the September 13th and 14th. And, um, for folks on the Durham campus, sessions are starting today. Oh, we're having an information session this afternoon from two to three on uh, social insurance numbers. And then we'll also have an in-person clinic where you can um, apply for your social insurance number on campus on the 7th, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we already talked a little bit about this, but I just wanted to highlight some of the sessions that we do host throughout the year um, that focus on, on your transition to life here in Canada. So, you know, just one of the first sessions that we're hosting this year is transitioning to life in Canada. So you're going to have some challenges along the way. It's not going to be all easy, which I'm sure you're already figuring out along the way. Um, and so we just want to talk about some of the experiences that most people um, coming to a new country do experience and some coping strategies to deal with those different challenges. Uh, filing your income taxes. So um, in Canada, we file our income taxes in April. So probably by January, you're going to start asking us questions. Don't worry. We'll, we'll support you through that process as well. 
Uh, finding off-campus housing, preparing for winter, I already mentioned those. Um, we also work with our career center here at Trent University to provide sessions on how you can market your skills um, as international students in the Canadian job force. Um, you actually have a lot of skills that employers are seeking. So um, how can you appropriately market yourself while you're, while you're looking for work here in Canada? Um, extending your study permit, the post-graduation work permit program. Um, and then if you're looking to register for any of these sessions or you want to know what sessions are upcoming, please visit our current students website. We have a full list of the, the schedule for the year. And so you can register for those sessions and, and attend. Yay, my favorite topic, immigration. I love talking about immigration. It brings me so much joy, believe it or not. Um, so I always like to start the conversation day one with defining some terms because often uh, students are confused about what immigration documents they have, they have and what do they do. So starting with a study permit, which you all should have, um, a study permit is an immigration document that defines your status in Canada. So what does that mean? It essentially, um, it, it allows you to study while you're in Canada. It's not an entry document, but once you're in Canada, it allows you to wear that student hat. Um, it has specific conditions that um, you have to follow in order to keep it valid. So some of those conditions are that you have to actively pursue your studies, which means being um, registered in each mandatory term of your degree or program for graduate students, that's fall, winter, summer. Not in that order. Wait, yes, in that order. <laughs> and then uh, the other condition that you have to meet is you have to make reasonable progress towards the completion of your studies. So what does that mean? It means that if you're in a 16 month program, it shouldn't take you eight years to finish, right? So um, you do have to meet that condition. Uh, and then also you have this really great condition that allows you to work in Canada without a work permit. Um, so on the bottom of your study permit, you're going to see this remarks section, which is going to indicate that under regulation 186, you are eligible to work on and off campus while you're here in Canada. And I'll talk about more about that later. Um, as I mentioned, it's not an entry document, so you can't arrive in Canada and show your study permit to the border agent and say, okay, I'm ready to enter. No, this is not your entry document. It only allows you to study once you're inside Canada. Um, the other thing to note is that please don't let your study permit expire while you're here in Canada. This is very important. Um, typically, I recommend that students extend their study permit at least three months prior to expiry, but as we know, IRCC is very slow these days. So my recommendation is to start the process four to six months prior to expiry. And your first step in that is booking an appointment with me. Um, yes, and then my last note here is that as graduate students, it's really important for you to make sure that your study permit is valid um, at least a month after your program is completed. So this is going to give you enough time to apply for the post-graduation work permit program because you need to do so with a valid study permit. So if you're concerned about that, you, you have questions, you're not sure if your study permit is valid right until, you know, with enough time for you to apply for PGWP, come meet with me and I can help you. Um, but essentially, usually most programs will end in September, January, and May. And so you just wanna make sure that your study permit is valid until the end of that month. And then you'll have lots of time to apply. How am I for time? Are you sure? <laughs> okay, great. And so what is it? So an entry document is, it's really what it is. Um, it's the document that allows you to enter Canada. Um, so the, the document that you require depends on uh, your country or territory of residence. So some folks are 
from visa requiring countries and require what's called temporary resident visa, it looks like this, stamped in your passport. And this is the document you need to enter Canada. Who in the room has a TRV? Lots of you, that's amazing. Uh, some other folks are from visa exempt countries and therefore you don't require a visa stamped in your passport. Instead, you have what's called an electro electronic travel authorization or an ETA. And this is electronically linked to your passport. So when you arrive at immigration in Canada, they'll scan your passport and they'll see that you have this entry document. Who has an ETA, anyone? Yeah, we have, okay, one ETA and oh, two, three, amazing, great. Um, so this document is a document that can expire while you're in Canada, but it's important that you don't leave because then you can't re-enter Canada, right? Because that's that entry document. So if, you're, if your TRV or ETA expires, that's okay. Just make sure that you apply for a new one before you leave Canada. everyone's favorite topic. So as a graduate student, you are permitted to work in Canada as long as you meet um, some specific requirements. So the first requirement is that you must be full-time enrolled, which in for graduate students, uh, you're automatically full-time enrolled unless you request part-time, so you're good to go. Um, and you have to have those study permit working conditions to, stated on your study permit. So take a look, make sure that you have them. And you'll also require a social insurance number to, to work as well. So how much can you work? So um, IRCC uh, indicates that you are eligible to work 20 hours per week off campus and unlimited hours on campus during the regular academic session. So for graduate students, that is fall, winter, summer terms. So basically most of the time you can work 20 hours off campus and unlimited hours on campus. And then during regularly scheduled breaks, you are permitted to work uh, full-time or unlimited hours essentially. And what is a regularly scheduled break? According to IRCC, it's any break that's actually noted in the graduate academic calendar. So you can take a look and see what breaks are noted in the calendar, and then you can work unlimited hours off campus. I know it's day one, but let's talk about graduation. Um, <laughs> so when you complete your studies, you essentially have 90 days to change your temporary resident status or leave Canada. Uh, so a great program, it is called the Post-Graduation Work Permit Program, which is to allow you to receive a one-time open work permit that is valid for up to three years. So if you're a graduate student finishing or completing a 16 month graduate program with no scheduled breaks, can you raise your hand if that's you? I feel like most people are probably in that situation. Okay, great. Um, then uh, you would be eligible for a three year work permit, which is great. An open work permit means that it is not a work permit that is employer specific. And also you can work anywhere in Canada. So that means that you can change employers as many times as you need. You can uh, work anywhere in Canada. You can be unemployed if you need time to, to find work. So it's a really, really uh, great opportunity for you. Um, you'll need to wait until your degree is officially audited to apply. So you'll get what's called a graduation letter from the School of Graduate Studies. They'll issue this to you, and then you can apply for the work permit. And then, um, so Immigration Canada, the ideal immigration pathway for them is study at a designated learning institution like Trent, then get a work permit, and then apply for permanent residency. So this, the um, work experience that you gain under the post-graduation work permit can qualify for a pathway to permanent residence and eventually citizenship if that's something you're interested in. Yeah. And then to apply for the post-graduation work permit, you need a valid study permit. So just make sure that your study permit is valid um, right up until the end of your degree there. I'm sorry. 
I, we started a little bit behind. Are you next? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna very talk about health insurance. Feel free to cut me off at any time. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm not going to talk in detail about the health insurance policies, but I'm here today to tell you, you have health insurance, please don't worry. Um, so all international students are um, at Trent University have two health insurance policies that you're automatically enrolled in as of September 1st. So the first one is your primary health care plan, which is the university health insurance plan. And then the second one is your Trent student benefits plan. So um, you're automatically registered in these policies, even if you don't have your proof of insurance card yet, you still are in the policies. So if you needed medical care, please feel free to access medical care while you're here in Ontario. Um, the most important note here at the bottom of the page is if you have a medical emergency and you do not have your health insurance cards, please call 911, visit your nearest hospital, visit a clinic, um, and you will still be uh, you will still be able to access care. So please don't delay in going to the hospital if you're having an emergency and you don't have your cards yet. Um, so here's here's an overview of the two policies. As you can see, they work very closely together to provide very comprehensive care. So the University Health Insurance Plan. This is administered by Trent International, and it covers. Um, medical doctors, hospital services, emergencies. So if you have to go to the hospital, uh, diagnostic testing and pregnancy, it does have limits. So um, you can check out the UHIP at Trent, or sorry, uhip.ca for more details. And if you have questions, you can contact Trent International and we can support you in providing information about this plan. And then the Trent Student Benefits Plan, um, this is your extended health and dental plan. It's administered by the Trent Graduate Student Association, and it covers uh, prescription medicine, eye exams, uh, dental care, uh, physiotherapy, doctors, uh, and accident and trouble. And if you have questions about this plan, you can contact benefits at trendcentral.ca. Uh, just to give you an example of how these two plans work together. You visit a doctor um, because you're feeling unwell and your doctor's visit is going to be covered under the university health insurance plan. And then your doctor prescribes some medicine and that's going to be covered under your trend student benefits plan. Okay. Okay. And this is the last thing. I, I know it's day one and I hate to talk about scams on day one, but I feel like it's a really important topic to talk to you about. Um, so in the interest of time, I'm going to skip this, but usually I always ask folks to reflect on, so if I were coming to visit you in your home country, what scams would you warn me about? Like what scams are common in your home country? Um, scams happen everywhere in the world, um, but obviously because you're new to Canada, you're not aware of the different scams that are prevalent here in Canada. So you're vulnerable because you're new. You're new to Canada. You don't understand all of the rules. You don't understand which, which scams are common. Um, and also as international students, you have an inherent fear to get in trouble with the government of Canada or the police, right? Um, and so scammers will often use this to their advantage. So they'll, they'll threaten you with deportation, um, typically they threaten you with deportation or arresting you. So just keep this in mind. If someone is threatening you, think, uh, think twice about it. So it's important to note that no employer, no government agency, the police in Canada um, are never going to ask you for money over the phone. And they're never going to uh, put a time pressure on you so that you have to do something very quickly. Um, if, and if not, there will be repercussions and they're never going to threaten to deport you. So if you get a call and someone is threatening you, please just hang up, it's a scam. Um, so when, if you're in doubt, just hang up and contact Trent International and we can walk you through the experience you had and we can figure out if it's a scam together. So common scams, 
Um, a very, very common one is you receive a text or a phone, um, a phone call and they say, hey, you've won something. You've won a trip to the Bahamas. Press one to collect your prize. Is anyone here from the Bahamas? <laughs> okay, because <laughs> you could have a trip home, you know? Um, but this is a scam. It's very, very common in Cam Canada. Please just hang up, don't press one. Um, Another one that's really important to talk about is housing scams. I don't know if any of you have already experienced this. I know that many international students or undergraduate international students have. Um, so typically in these scenarios, a landlord, uh, sorry, a scammer posing as a landlord will ask for money before you even view, view the apartment. They'll say, hey, I have a good deal for you. If you send me $2,000, I will secure this room for you, but you haven't seen pictures, you haven't visited the room. Um, they often say that they are out of the country so they can't meet you in person. And uh, they'll give you a good deal if, they, if you just take care of their house. That's, this is a scam, so please. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Um, same, you know, same, a similar scenario for scammers who are posing as employers who offer you a job and you haven't applied for that job, but they're just reaching out and saying, hey, I think you'd be great for this job. I don't know you, but I have a really great opportunity for you. Um, so, you know, <laughs> if it seems too good to be true, probably is. And then the last one, sorry, I was on the job. Um, I actually added this one twice here, but uh, the other scenario that's really, really important for you to note is that especially at this time of the year and during tax season, there will often be calls that um, of scammers who are claiming to be part of the Canadian government. So Immigration Canada, um, the Canadian Revenue Agency, or the, a police officer, they're able to disguise their phone number so it looks legitimate. And they're going to immediately say, there is a warrant for your arrest and if you don't pay a fine, you will be arrested or deported. This is a very, very common scam. And often scammers will target newcomers and new phone numbers at this time of year. So if you receive a call like this, please hang up. Okay. And then if you're a victim of a scam, call the, your first step is to call the police or Trent International. They're going to uh, provide you with information on how to make to file a report with a Canadian anti-fraud center. Um, and then my last piece of advice is just share your stories with others, um, with other international students, because you know even Canadians, residents of Canada also experience these scams and the more we can talk about it, uh, the, the less people will experience them. And then I'm not going to go through this, but I'll leave it with you and I'll have the folks at uh, the School of Grad Studies um, send this information to you, but I'm just giving you a new student checklist, some of the things that you should think about after today's session, and how to contact us. Um, thank you so much for having me. I'm so, so happy to see you all here. I know it's been a terrible immigration journey, so the fact that you're here is a miracle. I'm so happy to see you. Please come meet me if you have any immigration-related questions, and I hope you have a really great uh, start of your experience here at Trent University. Thanks everyone. So much, Jessica, that was really helpful information. I, I know it probably felt like a lot of information, but we'll make sure that we get notes out to you so that you can um, review these slides if you like later and do book an appointment with Jessica uh, regardless of which campus you're at, I'm sure you do virtual appointments as well. Yeah, let's do it on the mic. Thanks. You can book an appointment on the student experience portal, whether you're in Durham or Peterborough um, or anywhere in Ontario. And uh, you're going to look on the left hand side of the screen, look for the appointment bookings in Peterborough or Durham and then Trent International, and then you'll find the immigration advising appointments, okay? Yeah, thanks everyone. Perfect, thank you so much, Jessica. 
It is now my pleasure to introduce Jane Rennie from the uh, Graduate Studies Office. She is our finance officer and she has more information for you all about student finances and scholarships and all the money pieces. So Jane, I'm gonna turn it over to you now. Here's your clicker. Thank you. This way, you still see me? All right. Hi, I'm Jane, Graduate Studies Finance Officer. I walked around and met some people in this group. I know a group of you have traveled a long distance, kind of moved around too, so I'll have to pay attention to that one. All right, so I'm trying to give you an overview at a high level because you're getting so much information and maybe I'll just point out keywords that might pop back at you when you're like, oh, I think I need to know this. Okay, the quick agenda, uh, student accounts, fees and deadlines, health and dental, how to make a payment and bursaries and scholarships is the overview of what I'll be going for today. I'm going the wrong way, I'm a little clicker. There you go, student account. Your student account is made by the university's secure student system is where we charge all your fees and your payments are received. Has everyone looked at their student account, the MyTrent account? Have you, has everyone been invoiced for this term? A show of hands of anyone who has not yet. Done, well done guys, that's great. That just means everybody's properly registered. Perfect start. It's important that you review your statement of account regularly, especially after payment. You may notice there's a lag time before when you make the payment and it lands into your bank account. Um, your account statement is available online through your MyTrend portal. Students can access the statement of account under the finances tab, my account, statement of account. Deadlines for graduate students. Graduate fees are due three times a year, and it's variable. This is your first term, and if you're in a professional program, the deadline is the wife from variable to two, and if you need the third situation, you can contact It was due on the first. Oh, sorry. It was due into the, wow. It's due into the first. Um, other programs, the end deadline, all fees must be paid by September 28th. Then going forward, all of your tuition fees will be the 28th. So uh, January 28th and May 28th. And next year, everybody's fees will be due September 28th. And the graduate tuition fees vary between research thesis-based programs and professional programs. I would encourage you to go to the fee schedule, which is posted. Um, Fees are subject to the approval of the Trent University Board of Governors and their yearly fee schedule is posted in September. Ideally, we get that posted by July, mid-July, and you can find what you'll be paying and what, you, what will be due for the following terms. So you'll know ahead. Even if you have not yet been invoiced for the tuition fees, you will know what the expectation is for those fees. Okay, internal Trent funding is applied in thirds and posted to student accounts during the third week of the first month of the term. So if you were getting funds from the university, they would be posted to your student account at that time. And your tuition is not due until the 28th. So it should go on and then your fees will be due. Graduate teaching, assistant, teaching assistantships are a form of employment. There may be some in this group that have a GTA and there are other paperwork that should have been resolved by now. External scholarships, or if you've got scholarships coming from outside of Trent, they will get posted to your student account, come off your student account earlier and in full from the external uh, source of that funding. Anyone in the science, the sciences, the ENLS, material science here? Okay, this is just for you. 
So there'll be a form that you'll need to complete with your faculty member. They will submit it. It'll come into my office. We'll go through a process to uh, approve, and then it'll land on your um, bank account, on your student account. And there may be a lag time between when you completed that form until when it actually lands in your bank account. So don't be alarmed about that, okay? Anyone else on the material science or ENLS? Good to know. Okay. Then dental benefits. I covered it off. It was already covered off a little bit. Um, they're billed in full in September for students enrolled and in January for students starting their graduate program in the winter. The plan is compulsory. And for more information, here is the website. I'm not sure if you were able to grab that quickly at the last time. So that's where you, I don't know if you want to take a picture of it. And then Trent Central Student Association is your contact for further assistance along with the Trent International Payment. There's been some changes and it's real, um, there's been some changes with the program. Um, your student account and how to pay. Your account statement is available 24 seven online through your MyTrend portal. So you can go online at any time and you can see what your student account balance is. We, now, what's new is we do not send invoices or bills through the email. That could, as we were talking about scams, we don't do that. Your student account is maintained by the university's secure student system, which I mentioned earlier, but it's just, this was important to reinforce the secure student statement is where we charge all your fees and your payments are received. It is every student's responsibility to regularly log in and check. So if you do make a payment, make sure it lands on there. If it's a problem with the payment, get in touch with us as quickly as possible. If you get receipts when you're making those, keep the receipts, keep a documentation, create like a folder or something to hang on to those receipt information. Um, and make sure your balance is paid by the fee deadlines. What's the fee deadline? September 28th, January 28th, May 28th. Okay. This may opt to seek finances from their education through private lenders. That's fine. We encourage you, however, that, that's your, definitely your choice. Um, but be aware, Trent will not issue refunds that exceed the amount of your Trent tuition. So we expect you to pay your fees for Trent fees, anything that you've earned from an external lender that is going to be covering your living costs, that should be directed to your own personal bank account. So we don't want to be the receiver of your living expenses from your external organization that you've made a bank payment with. Does that make sense? Okay, that's fantastic. Um, and then just go through, and that's the the website link to get further information. Okay. It's really great. Once you're in Canada, they got this preferred payment mount that is new. It's open account, make a payment icon. Payments are posted on students' account in real time, which means if you've made an account through the system, your Canadian bank and to Trent on the real time using the payment button, it's going to show up. So you're not going to have that three or four day lag time. So we're really encouraging you to go in that direction. Other payment methods um, can take three to five business days. So these are the other online banking, check money order, payments at most banks, flywire. They can take three to five business days because you go to your institution and then talk to them. Then your banking institution has to go to our banking institution and tell them, here's some money. And then that bank has to get it over to Trent, and then we have to post it onto the student account. So as you can see, there's different stops, and that's the delay for the three to five. So if you can go to use the other system, I would encourage you so you don't have that anxiety. Of, Did my money land on my account? Where is it? Does that make sense, everyone? Because that's a bit new. Great. Okay, my Trent uh, finance and account statement. <laughs> These are really it's okay. 
Oh, I'm good now. I'm walking. Okay. So the uh, my trend portal fin finances account statement. This is your account statement. So you can see it there. You'll need to enter your social insurance number. This is make a payment, request credit refunds, your tax forms, this, and your bank account information. This is really important to make sure that it's updated, okay? And your financial aid, you will need to go on to some of that sites because for bursaries as we go further along. So oh, graduate scholarships and awards. They, there are funding opportunities to graduate students through various scholarships and awards and competitions. Students must be aware of the internal deadlines. So there are internal deadlines at Trent and you have to meet those deadline. We do an adjudication process and then we may go external or we'll sort it internally depending on what type of scholarship opportunity there is. So please review funding opportunities which are posted and sorted. It's really not the best website, but we've tried to sort them in federal, provincial, and donor funded opportunities. Funding competitions have different applications and eligibility criteria. Sometimes you can use some of the materials, but you have to adjust to each one. And watch for workshops in the fall. Not sure where we're gonna be putting it, but I suspect it'll be on my website under the scholarships section. So you might, I would encourage people to take a look at that. Oh. Oh. The campus, that's Bada, that's the bridge. I think I just threw one. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> that was my last one. Um, graduate bursaries. The general bursary program for grad students is organized through a collaboration with the financial aid office and myself. Um, and the application will be posted on the My Trent portal under finance tabs. It'll open up probably by the end of the week. There are going to be two bursaries for grad studies. One will be international grad bursary and one will be the domestic. The second sentence says, if you are international, this is your form. The title also should give it away. Um, so fill in your bursary application. It's due by September 30th. It usually takes about two weeks to do the assessment. And then the funds, if you're successful, land on your bank onto your student account. And winter deadline, spring deadline. But you will find the application on your MyTrent portal, ideally by the end of this week. Does anyone have questions about anything? I don't know if you're asking questions. question was, it, if you have funding or a scholarship, can you still apply for bursaries? And the answer is yes. You would indicate and we would, we would review taking into consideration the funding that you have. We look at all applications that are submitted. So everyone's in, like you're encouraged to apply. Every student is invited to apply for a graduate bursary using the proper form, whether it's international or domestic, all bursary assessments, all bursary applications are assessed. So you're welcome to apply. It doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be eligible to receive a bursary, but you won't receive a bursary if you don't apply. That's my hope, yeah. We were working on it. It was, I've talked to Danielle, it's pretty close. We're really close because we switched them up. We divided them. So I thought it would be more appropriate for the two. Okay. 
Well, thank you, everyone, and give it back. <laughs> thank you, Jane. Jane has been um, working in graduate studies finance for a few years and is very knowledgeable. I know she does take like appointments. You do virtual appointments and in-person appointments. So if you did want to meet with Jane to talk through a specific situation or you have specific questions, she would be delighted to help you and is, and is very knowledgeable and loves to ensure that our students get as much money as possible. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we are drawing to an end for this session. And at 11.15, another session is going to be starting in room 117 for all students who are in um, a research program. If you are in a professional program or you're in a course-based program, your lunch starts now. So. Very exciting. You can feel free to roam or into the atrium, chat with the tables that are there, um, visit and, and partake of the lunch. And if you're in a research session, a research program, please pop to 117 at 1115 for your next session. Thank you so much. Go visit with the alpacas. Have a campus tour. Enjoy your day. Thank you.